This is uh, section 3-1. And the first thing we have to deal with is um, are, are there going to be solutions to differential equations? So we have theorem 1 and theorem 2 and uh, theorem 2. And basically what they're going to end up saying is that uh, we're going to have um, uh, linear equations that are differential equation linear. I can spell linear. Differential equations will have solutions that will be, the solutions are going to exist, which is nice, because if they didn't exist, why would we want to do this class? Uh, so they exist, and they are unique. So that is always good, too. All right, so we won't worry about that. So the first thing we're going to worry about is how do we know linear linear functions are independent? And we're going to we get to use this in, in many different places. Are they linearly independent? Linearly. Well, that was bad too, wasn't it? Linearly independent. Or are they linearly dependent upon each other? And for that, uh, we come up with something cool called the Ronskian. And uh, if I could spell Ronskian, I... and so uh, the Ronskian says that uh, if I have functions f of x and g of x. And the Ronskian of uh, f of x, g of x is going to be the determinant f of x, g of x, f prime of x, g prime of x. And when that determinant um, is equal, when that rod scan is equal to zero, then I'm linearly dependent. And when the rod scan is not equal to zero, then I'm linearly independent. Okay, so we'll take an example that we probably already know and, and uh, see what happens. So we're going to say uh, f of x is 1 and g of x is x, and we'll do an h of x while we're at it and call it x squared. Now we already know that 1, x, and x squared are linearly independent, so when we do the Ronskian, we better get something that's not 0, otherwise uh, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and pick another example. So my Ronskian is going to be 1, 0, 0, the first derivative, the second derivative, uh, x, first derivative, second derivative is 0. Uh, x squared, first derivative, second derivative. And we take the Ronskian. I get a 4. I get a 0, I get a 0, I get a 0, I get a 0. And I get another 0. How did I get a 4 there? Oh well, can't have everything. Two. Is that better? Most of you are sitting there it's telling me I was really dumb doing that. But I did that on purpose to see if anyone was paying any attention. So 2 minus 0 is 2, which is not equal to 0. Therefore, the functions are linearly independent. And we picked some that were, so that was good too. So that helped out. Okay. Now we're going to look at uh, another set, and we're going to look at uh, f of x is sine x, uh, if I could spell sine x, and g of x is going to be cosine x. And again, we're going to say to ourselves, so well, these are obviously linearly independent, um, you know, and, but so it better come out that it is. Okay, so 
My Ronskian is sine x, and the derivative of sine is cosine x, and cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. And I do that, I get um, minus sine x squared minus cosine x squared. And I see that that's minus 1, because sine squared plus cosine squared would be plus 1, so minus that would be minus 1, which implies that these are linearly independent functions, something that we already knew, because uh, if we looked at uh, sine x, we remember that uh, we do a, a Taylor expansion around 0, 1 minus x um, x, try x, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial. And if you look at cosine x in a Taylor expansion, we get 1 minus x squared over 2 plus x4, x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial. And we could say that that's 2 factorial if we wanted to. We could say that this was 0 factorial if we wanted to, and we could say that that's 0 factorial if we wanted to. But we really didn't want to do that, but we did it anyway. But obviously, they're, they, they were, we knew they were literally independent to begin with, and they are. Um, one more? All right, one more. Um, f of x is e to the x, um, g of x is x, that, that's a good one because it's good to get the derivative n, uh, h of x is going to be a 1. So the Roskian is going to be um, e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, um, x, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Um, that's zero, that's zero, that's um, boom, 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 zero, zero, one, one, one. That, yeah, so zero, 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 e to the x, minus e to the x. Now, we have, uh, well, that, yeah, that, that'd be linearly independent not equal to zero, therefore linearly independent. Okay. I guess that's enough to goof off there. Okay, well, back in chapter one, we had a thing that said, uh, what if the solution to the differential equation was e to the rx? Okay, so we're going to do that problem again and say uh, y prime, y double prime plus 3y prime. Well, that's a good place to put the prime. I was goofing off there. Plus 2y is equal to 0. That was the problem that I thought we had. And y is equal to e to the rx, and y prime is equal to e to the r, r e to the rx, and y double prime is equal to r squared e to the rx. Okay, and if we have uh, one of them, we change colors in three of these guys. And two of those guys, then zero is going to be two e to the rx plus three r e to the rx plus r squared e to the rx. Okay, I think I did that right. Now, if we look at that, and we're going to rewrite that r squared e to the rx plus 3r e to the rx plus 2e to 
is equal to uh, zero. And then uh, we can divide things out, right, as long as we're not dividing by zero. So is there ever a case with, where e to the rx is equal to zero? And um, so let's see now, e to the rx. So I go like this, and e to the rx, and it's, it goes through one. Right there, that's a one. It doesn't look like a one, but that's a one, and then it goes higher than over. But it's never going to go through zero. It doesn't cross that line. So I can divide by e to the rx. That was, that was a point of the whole thing. So if I divide both sides by e to the rx, I get r squared plus 3r plus 2 is equal to 0. I call that my characteristic equation for the, um, the differential equation. So my differential equation was y double prime 3y plus 2y. My characteristic equation is r squared plus 3r plus 2. Isn't that convenient and it works every time and I can solve for this differential equation and uh, so we're going to factor it out and I got an r and I got an r plus 2 plus 1 is 0 and my r is going to have a solution of minus 2 and minus 1. Well, if r is going to be minus 2 and minus 1, that means y e to the rx, y is equal to e rx, has to have the same type of solution. Okay, so I've got a y1, we're going to call it solution 1, uh, e to the minus 2 rx. And minus 2 rx. Who is goofing off here? e to the 2x. r is 2. And then a second solution, y2, e to the minus x. And are these two things linearly independent? Well, I don't know. I will have to look at the Ronskian and see if they are. So I'm going to look at the Ronskian, e to the minus 2x, minus 2, e to the minus 2x, e to the minus x, minus e to the minus x. And I've got um, minus e to the minus 3x plus 2e to the minus 3x, which comes out to e to the minus 3x, which is never equal to 0. Therefore, these are linearly independent solutions, so that's convenient. Um, should I check my work? I will check my work. I will see if, because um, uh, I can have a solution, C1e to the minus 2x plus C2e to the minus x, uh, y prime, checking, is going to be minus 2e to the, C2e to the minus 2x minus x. C2 minus x. Where did that come from? C2. Okay, so I got minus C2 e to the minus x. Y double prime 4 C2 e to the minus 2x plus C2 e to the minus x. All right, what do I got? I've got, uh, got one of these guys, and I've got three of them, and I've got two of them. And when I add them together, I'm supposed to get zero. That's what I'm supposed to get. Okay, so i got two and four for six. Minus six is zero. Boom, 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 zero. And then I've got two and minus three and plus another one that's going to be a zero, zero, and my solution checks. The interesting thing is I now have a characteristic equation of a differential equation.
and I'm going to use that. So let's find a, um, a problem. We have A y double prime plus B y prime plus C y is equal to zero. This differential equation has a characteristic equation. A r squared plus B r plus C is equal to zero. This looks like something we dealt with in ninth grade, our algebra class. Isn't that convenient? So what happens to this particular equation? Well, we can have case one. We can have two distinct real roads. And uh, we'll call them R1 and R2. R1, R2. In case two, we can have the same root. We'll call that R is equal to R1. So we can set R1, R1. They're the same root. Case 3, if we had a case 2, because obviously I left that off. Case 2, we could have imaginary roots. And if we had imaginary roots, we would be in section 2 of chapter 3. But we're going to have them anyway. And uh, so R could be equal to alpha plus or minus beta pi where the beta is different than that b up there. That's not the same. This is beta, that's b. Okay, so those are our, th our three cases. So uh, in case one, if we have two distinct roots, then our differential equation solution is going to look in the, like the form uh, c1 e to the r1x plus c2 e to the r2x and C1 and C2, we're going to have to have initial conditions in order to figure them out because otherwise we wouldn't know what they are. And then uh, in case two, we have the same root, case one, case two. So in that case, our differential equation would be in the form C1e to the rx, and we call it r1x, so we'll put it on 1x there, plus c2e, c2x, e to the r1x. And in case 3, which we don't get to until the next section, so this is uh, case 3, section 3.2. Anyway, um, y is going to equal uh, c1 cosine um, r, uh, no, oh, that's close, um, is going to be e to the alpha x times c1 cosine beta x plus C2 sine um, beta x. Now, why do we put the cosine first and the sine second when we know the sine always happens first and the derivative of the sine is a cosine? Why do we do that? Well, uh, we're going alphabetical order. So cosine followed by sine. Just one of those weird things, I guess. So now with a characteristic equation, um, we can come up with a differential equation, it doesn't have to be first order. It could be uh, many orders, you know, whatever it might be. In fact, we'll, we'll do that right now. We'll do something weird. You guys like weird? All right. So over here, we will do a um, Pascal's triangle. Uh, 
All right, so I got Pascal's triangle, and I've got some direct differential equation, and we'll go with um, y, 1, 2, 3, fourth derivative plus 4, y, third derivative plus uh, 6y, second derivative plus 4y, first derivative plus y is equal to 0. And we have a characteristic equation, um, r to the fourth plus 4r cubed plus 6r squared, 6r squared really, 4r plus 1 plus 1. plus 1 is equal to 0. Oh, look at this. This has repeated roots. r plus 1, r plus 1, r plus 1, r plus 1. Do I have enough yet? r plus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do I have 5 or do I only have 4? That's a good question. Do I have 5 or do I only have 4? I only have 4. I knew that. E is equal to 0. All right. So bottom my roots. My roots are minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, Minus one. Oh, they're all repeating. So what is my what is my answer going to look like? What well, y is going to look like? C one e to the minus x plus c two x e to the minus x plus c three x squared e to the minus x plus c four x cubed e to the minus x. So that's what my solution is going to look like. And uh, I could check that solution, but it would work, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, we'll, we'll do one now that we're doing something weird, so. Um, yeah, we won't do that. That's silliness. Okay, so we're going to look at problem number two next. And we see that um, problem number two, we have y double prime minus 9y is equal to 0. We have y0 is equal to minus 1. y prime 0 is equal to 15. And conveniently, they give us the answer as well. And they give us that that y1 is equal to um, e to the 3x, and y2 is equal to e to the minus 3x. Isn't that convenient? Okay, so the first thing we're supposed to do in problem two is check the solutions to make sure they work. So y1 is uh, e to the 3x, y prime 1 is 3e to the 3x, y double prime 1 is 9e to the 3x. I'm supposed to have one of these guys and minus 9 of them. And when I do what I do, I'm supposed to get 0. So minus 9 plus 9 is 0. Check. That is a solution. We'll check the other solution. y2 is equal to e to the minus 3x. Uh, y prime 2 is equal to minus 3e to the minus 3x. Y double prime 2 is 9e to the minus 3x. I want one of those guys, minus 9 of the those, and I'm supposed to get 0. 9 minus 9 is 0. Check. So those are both two solutions. Then we're supposed to go and say y is equal to c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the minus 3x 
and come up with what is C1 and C2 because we know the, um, the initial conditions. Y0 is minus 1, Y0 is 15. Okay, um, so Y of 0 is equal to 1, which means uh, C1 plus C2 has to be 1. Y prime X equals 3, C1 e to the minus, uh, not minus, X, minus 3, C2 e to the minus 3X, Y prime at 0 is supposed to be 15, which is going to be 3C1 minus 3C2. All right, so we have two equations, two unknowns. What are we going to do with that? C1 plus C2 is equal to 1. 3C1 minus 3C2 is equal to uh, 15. It's equal to minus 1. Put a minus sign there. Minus 1. It's always good to look back at the main problem and make sure that you didn't write it down wrong. Okay, so we had two equations, two unknowns. We could put it in our calculator and it would tell us the right answer. Or we could use Kramer's rule. So we'll use Kramer's rule. C1 is going to be uh, minus 1, 15, 1 minus 3 divided by 1, 3, 1, minus 3. And the guy in the bottom simplest, minus 3, minus another 3, giving me a minus 6 on the bottom. On the top, I have a 3, minus 15, would be a minus 12. Yes, minus 12 for a 2. Well, if C1 is 2, then C3 had best be minus 2, right? Hmm, I don't think so. Minus 3. Minus 3, that's better. Right, if C1 is 2, C2 has to be minus 3, and then this is going to be um, 6 plus 9, 15, okay. So that's good. So our solution, y of x, this is our final answer. Final answer, yay! y of x is equal to 2e to the 3x minus 3e to the minus 3x. Now the thing about differential equations, if there's never true until you check them, so we're going to check this, y is equal to 2e to the 3x minus 3e to the minus 3x. Now you could say we already did that in the original part of the problem. It doesn't matter what c1 and c2 are. Yeah, you could do that. But I'm just doing it just for uh, just so I can make a mistake like that. Wouldn't that be good? And then it wouldn't check and then we'd have to go back and figure out what we did wrong. 18e to the 3x minus 27e to the minus 3x. Okay, and we want um, 9 minus 9, the original guy, and one of that guy, and when we get done, we best have 0, otherwise we're not going to be happy. There's minus 18, there's plus 18, that's a 0. There's plus 37, there's minus 27. There's minus plus 27, minus 27, 4, 0, check. It checks. So that's good. We like that. I hope we can find a more difficult problem to do. Let's see. How about number six? Y double prime plus Y prime minus six Y is zero. We have two, we have two solutions given to us. Y1 e to the 2x, Y2 e to the minus 3x. And we have um, y of 0 is 7, 
and uh, y prime of 0 is minus 1. I hope. Okay, well, we're going to uh, take a detour here and say, oh, gee, this has a characteristic equation r squared plus r minus 6 is 0. That factors uh, r, r plus 3 minus 2 is 0. r is going to be uh, minus 3, 2 in solution set thingies here. And y is going to be uh, c1 e to the minus 3x plus c2 e to the 2x which is exactly what it says those guys are up there. If I had an equal sign here, that'd be clever. Okay, so I could have skipped knowing the right answer, and I could have got it from the characteristic equation, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to check these guys. Okay, so y1 is e to the 2x, y prime 1, 2, e to the 2x. It'd be nice if that looked more like a 2, wouldn't it? and y prime, double prime 1, 4 e to the 2x. Okay, I want one of these, one of those, minus 6 of them, and I want it all to come out to 0. Minus 6 plus 2 plus 4, 0, check. Okay, I'm going to check the second solution. Y2 is equal to minus 3x, even minus 3x. Y prime 2, minus 3e to the minus 3x. Y double prime 2, 9e to the minus 3x. Okay, and we want uh, one of them and one of them and minus 6 of these guys. All right, minus 6, minus 3, plus 9, 0. We wanted to get 0, check. Okay, so the solutions check. Um, we now take our final answer guy, which isn't a final answer yet, and because we have to come up with C1 and C2. So almost the final answer. e to the 2x plus C2e to the minus 3x. Okay, that's fine. And uh, y prime, well, let's not do that yet. Let's look at y at 0. y at 0 is 7, which means that uh, c1 plus c2 has to be 7. y prime is going to be uh, 2 c1 e to the 2x minus 3 c2 e to the minus 3x and y prime at 0 is supposed to be what? minus 1 minus 1 which is going to be uh, 2 c2 minus 3 c c1 3, c. okay so that's good all right, so I have two equations, two unknowns, which is always good. C1 plus C2 is equal to 7, and 2C1 minus 3C2 is equal to minus 1. And we can just put that on our calculator and get the right answer if we wanted to. Um, but because this is a math class, we'll use Kramer's rule again. C1, 7 minus 1. Uh, 1 minus 3 divided by 1, 2, 1 minus 3. Okay, at the bottom we got minus 3, minus uh, 2 for minus 5. On the top I've got a minus 21 plus 1 for a minus 20. So C1's a 4. C2 yeah, well, if C1's a 4, then C2 has to be a 3. There's no reason to use Kramer's rule to get that. We plug them back in here. 8 minus 9 is minus 1, so that checks. So, um, now we're ready to do final answer. So, final answer. 
and we have um, y of x is equal to 4 e to the 2x plus 3 e to the minus 3x. Are we done? No, we're not done because we haven't checked it yet. So I'm going to check it. Even though we've already checked it, we're going to do it again. Y prime, not Y, just Y, get rid of the prime. Y is equal to 4e to the 2x plus 3e to the minus 3x. Y prime 8e to the 2x minus 9e to the minus 3x. Y double prime 16e to the 2x plus 27e to the minus 3x. Okay, we want, um, what do we want anyway? Anybody know? We want one of these guys, one of those guys, and minus six of them. Okay, so I got minus 24 plus 24. Those guys go away for zero. We're looking for zero. We've got minus 18 minus 27 plus 27. That guy is zero. So zero plus zero is zero. And the problem checks. Okay. So we're going to move on to number 16. And this is an interesting problem because we're we're checking it, we know it is, we have the right answer, but nowhere in the rest of the class are we ever going to get the to know the method to get this answer. Isn't that cool? Alright, so I've got x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus y is equal to zero. I've got a y1 which is going to be the cosine of the natural log of x. And I'm going to have y2 is going to be the sine of the natural log of x. And then I'm going to have initial conditions. y1 is equal to 2. y prime 1 is equal to 3. Now, why did we pick that anyway? Why don't we have initial conditions y of 0 is equal to something and y prime of 0 is equal to something? Any idea? Okay. Just thought I'd ask. Let me see. Well, what's the natural log of 0? <laughs> okay, that's fine. All right, gotcha. All right, well, we got to check our work first. Um, so we're going to check y1, cosine natural log x, y prime 1, minus sine natural log x times 1 over x, y prime 2, y prime 2, minus cosine natural log x, 1 over x, 1 over x, minus sine natural log x, 1 over x, times minus 1 over x squared. No. This guy's not there. Okay, that's better. So, minus cosine this guy times that guy times the derivative of that guy. Minus this times the derivative of that. And the derivative of uh, uh, x to the minus 1 is equal to minus x to the minus 2, which is that guy there. Okay, so we've done that. And what do we want? We want 
x squared of this guy and x of that guy and one of them and when we get done we better have zero okay so x squared times 1 over x times 1 over x is going to be 1 so cosine minus cosine it goes away and the same thing here sine minus sine plus sine goes away boom boom and we have 0 plus 0 checks okay so the uh, y who put a 2 there did I do that yeah that's better all right, now we got to check the other solution. y2 is equal to sine natural log x. y2 prime cosine natural log x 1 over x. y double prime 2 minus sine natural log x 1 over x 1 over x plus cosine natural log x minus 1 over x squared and that's in parentheses because we have we're gonna get rid of that telltale thing there because um, we're multiplying okay back to here. Line under there. We want x squared of these guys, x of those guys, one of those guys, and when we get done we better have zero. Okay, so I got a, a sine x, a natural log x, and a minus sine natural log x. Boom, boom. And I've got a cosine natural log x and a minus cosine natural log x. Zero plus zero checks. So the solution checks. Alright. So that uh, is interesting. Now we got to go and say that uh, when I add these guys together, I get y of x is equal to c1 cosine natural log x plus c2 sine natural log x and what I want to do is find out what c1 and c2 is so y at 1 is 2 All right, and so y at 1 makes this a 0 natural log of, of 1 is a 0 the cosine of 0 is 1 so I get a c1 the um, the same things here. I get a zero. The sine of zero is zero. So C2, C1 is equal to two. Excellent. So now I have an equation x, y of x is equal to two because I know what C1 is. Cosine natural log x plus C2 sine natural log x. And that's not much of an x either. Okay, there we go. And then y prime is going to be 2 minus 2 minus 2 sine natural log x 1 over x plus c2 cosine natural log x. 1 over x and y prime at 1 is going to be 3 y prime at 1 is going to be 3 um, the co the natural log of 1 is 0, zero the sine of 0 is 0 that guy goes away the natural log of 0 cosine of 0 is 1 there's a 1 over x there, it's a 1 also, so this is only C2. So C2 is equal to 3. And now I have a final answer. Uh, y of x is equal to 
2 cosine natural log x plus 3 sine natural log x. And uh, I'll leave this for you to check, so you can check it. You can check it. Otherwise, we'll, we might go a little too long on the video, and that'd be bad. All right, so number 20. Uh, f of x is pi. And g of x is uh, cosine x, so sine squared x plus sine squared x. And we want to know if these guys are literally independent. And okay, so we're going to look at the rod scan. And we're going to look at uh, f of x, f prime of x, and g of x, g prime of x. And look at that rod scan. All right, and we're going to have um, pi and zero. And then we look at this cosine squared plus sine squared, and we say, ah, oh, that's just one. One and zero. This is zero. These are not linearly dependent. So these are linearly, this is not equal to zero. No, this is equal to zero. So I'm equal to zero, so I am linearly dependent. Oh, wasn't that much easier than taking the first derivative of the, of the back guy here? That was much easier. Okay. You know, we're going to go on to 42. Yeah, sometimes the problems, as you get deeper into the section of problems, they just get easier. Sometimes they get harder. But those things happen. Okay, so I've got 35 watt double prime minus y prime minus 12y is equal to 0. And I don't have any initial conditions, so that means when I get my C1 and C2, I don't have to solve for them, which is really cool. So I have a characteristic equation, 35R squared minus R minus 12 is 0. And I go and I factor that. And um, 35 is 7 and a 5, right? And the 12 could be a 12 and a 1. Well, either one, one of them has to be minus uh, 3 or 4. So if I use the 3 and 4 guy and say uh, plus 4 minus 3, then I'm going to get the minus 1 there, and I get a 12 there, and I get that my roots. Now I could have used the quadratic formula or I could have just put it in my calculator and had my calculator tell me what it was. Could have done many things. Um, is going to be uh, minus 7 over 4 and it's going to be uh, 3 over 5. So those are my two roots. And that being the case, I have that um, I can write y of x Final answer, y of x equals c1 e, who in the world put 7 over 4 over here anyway? Must be going out of my mind, 4 over 7. e to the minus 4 over 7x plus c2 e to the 3 over 5x. All right, now we got to check it. All right, so y is equal to uh, c1 minus 4 over 7x plus c2 e to the 3 over 5x y prime minus 4 over 7 c1 e to the minus 4 over 7x plus 3 over 5 c2 e to the 3 over 5x y double prime minus this is going to be plus plus 16 over 49 c1 e to the minus 4 over 7x 
plus 9 over 25 e to the 3 over 5x. Isn't that something? Made it all the way to there. Now I need 35 of him, minus 1 of him, and minus 12 of this guy. And when I get done, I want to have 0. Okay, so luckily I have my calculator in my hand. Otherwise, I'd have to do it in my head. So, um, okay, so my calculator is all square, all, all clear. So I got minus 12. I've got plus 4 divided by 7. And I've got plus 35 times 16 divided by 49 and I put that to my and I don't get 0. Why don't I have 0? Um, why don't I have 0? Oh, I know why I don't have zero, because I put in the wrong numbers. I will do it again. Did I say I was putting in the wrong numbers? I'll listen to the tape later on. Minus 12 plus 4 divided by 7 plus 35 times 16 divided by 49. I put in 19 divided by 49, and that's my problem. Okay, so I have zero. Boom, 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 they go away. Okay, now we'll do it one more time. Minus 12 minus 3 divided by 5 plus 35 times 9 divided by 25. That's much better. Plus 0. Check. Boom, boom, boom. They go to 0. Okay, with that, we are done with um, this particular chapter and